and welcome back on the workbench. Today we're taking a look at this moisture uh, meter for your soil or garden. This is from Tac Life, which is a relatively new brand uh, to Amazon as far as I can tell. But the concept of a moisture, light, and pH meter for your soil is nothing new. And this is, if you look at the back here, uh, their information for, for Tac Life, facebook.com slash taclife.us. And this is made, I'm pretty sure this is made in China, as are most of these. A lot of these are green, and so if you buy one of these, and the reason why I bought one of these is I want to be able to check my soil, or specifically the pH in my soil, to know if I need to add lime or anything to adjust on a couple spots I'm having trouble growing grass. And so here we've got three functions. We can check for the light, that's particularly important for your garden. We've got pH and then moisture, and those are on different scales from dark to light, moisture at the bottom, and then pH in the middle. Bear in mind uh, that when we're thinking about pH, we want a pH uh, towards the middle, but you could use lime to adjust that as necessary. And so this tool is somewhat delicate because of the probes at the bottom, so you don't want to bend or damage that. The box is very appropriately sized, and then you get a warranty card it comes with this. I don't really know how useful that would be. And then this guide is in English, German, French, Spanish, Italian, and I'm assuming that's probably simplified Chinese at the bottom. Correct me if I'm wrong. And so then this walks you through all the functions for how you'd use this. And looking at the instructions, one of the things that definitely stands out to me I don't know that they did a very good job of editing the English in here when they say things such as uh, tenderly clean the probes with an abrasive soft paper and then they use metric to insert the probes between 3 and 15 centimeters. There's some other spacing and editing issues here. It says it's supposed to be to insert is recommended. It's not properly spaced. And then for testing the liquid, for testing liquid it says the tester is not submarine, you know, as opposed to water resistant or waterproof. So I think there's definitely uh, some room to be done on editing this. I think maybe that's uh, evident of a first generation product or a company that's not crossing all of its, or dotting all of its I's and crossing all of its T's. So let's go outside and take a look at this and check the pH in the soil. All right, so here I'm in a bare spot in my yard and I've stuck the probe in, and this was showing a pH of maybe a high seven at the very bottom right here, down towards the alkali scale. It's not too acidic, so that's good. And the light, actually I actually have to change the scale for that. The moisture comes up towards the wet side, and then as far as the light coming through, is on the dark side, which is fine, uh, such as a garden. All right, let's go check another spot in the yard where grass is growing much better than this. Okay, let's take a brief pause here and talk a little bit about pH and soil on a slightly academic level. The U.S. Department of Agriculture in the U.S. has several classifications for how they classify soil. On the acidic end, we've got low numbers for extremely acidic from 3.5 to 4.4. And as our numbers increase, it becomes less acidic. Slightly acidic up to about 6.5. And then our key bullseye is in the neutral range of 6.6 .6 to 7.3. This is where the optimal conditions will be for growing most plants. There's going to be some that actually need acidic soil. But those aside, ideally we want to be found in the neutral range, and that's what we're checking for with this meter. If you go above neutral, you get to alkali or basic soils, and that can take you all the way up to nine. You'll rarely find a soil less than about three and a half, and that's ridiculously rare. Um, but it still could happen, we, uh, and so let's talk a little more about this. So what actually causes, or what are some of the factors affecting the pH in your soil? Number one is what's the underlying mineralogy. In other words, where did the soil come from? You know, what type of minerals? Uh, was it dolomite? Is it limestone? What else is underneath? And where did that soil originate from? That's in question. 
your climate, how much rain, how much shade you get can affect bacteria growth. Uh, availability of oxygen in the soil can affect uh, aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Fertilizers that you've applied that purposely manipulated what the pH is in the soil, as well as past plantings. I think most farmers are well aware of this, that some crops will just suck up certain minerals more quickly than other crops will. And that's why you have crop rotation and you can't pl uh, keep planting, for example, corn in the same field year after year after year after year without having a penalty because of the nutrients that that corn is going to suck out of the soil. So if we look at some of the effects of pH on the soil, that as the pH level changes, the minerals that are available for plants to utilize is actually going to fluctuate as well. On the low end, so when the pH is considered acidic, uh, heavier metals such as iron, manganese, boron, copper, and zinc are going to increase. And we and those aren't usually considered useful for most plant growth, or at least plants that most people are interested in trying to grow. On the other end, if you get too high above that neutral point, uh, nitrogen availability can be reduced. And so there's a sweet spot in the middle around that neutral pH of about 7 for where we're really trying to hit to be able to optimize or plant growth, whether that's grass in a garden or that's, or I'm sorry, grass in your yard or other plants in a garden, we're really trying to hit for about that seven, unless you've got one of the handful of plants that actually needs acidic soil. And so there's ways that we can also manipulate this. You know, if you look at most fertilizer bags, there's going to be some sort of a rating in the form of nitrogen, potassium, and then uh, phosphorus or your uh, NPK rating that you can actually find on the bag. And so ways that we can control the pH, if the soil is too acidic, in other words, it's less than six, we can apply lime. This is commonly available at most home stores. And you can get bags of this and put it on your yard to be able to reduce or neutralize acidic soil. On the other end, if your soil is a little too basic or too alkali, uh, you can use a sulfur uh, content to be able to help neutralize that. Again, those are also available. Now, certain regions, it's going to be harder to obtain this if it's not a common problem in your area. But you can certainly order it online if, for whatever reason, your particular application needs one or the other. Where I particularly love people buy lime, but no one buys sulfur, and it's hard to find sulfur. Uh, in particular, for me, if I were to need it, I'd have to buy it online or work with one of my local vendors to obtain it. If you're looking for more detailed information, check out the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Their website is very deep and very extensive about this. I'll put a, a link below. They also have a program known as the Web Soil Survey, and you can get some very interesting information all about soils in your area. That's all map-based. That's, that's very interesting. So now let's go back to talking about the pH meter. All right, we're at another spot in the yard. This is still showing a pH. Make sure that switches all the way over of about seven, so it's in the same spot as the bare spot. So I can rule out pH as an issue there. That bare spot though has another issue because that's the top of my septic tank, which I thought might've been affecting the pH of the soil. I know some issues of soil depth there and other nutrients, but that's fine. So I just, I just thought I'd give that a quick test on the pH meter and check other bare spots. So I hope you found this video useful about the Tac Life pH meter. And I'll put a link to this below. If you have any questions or comments, put it down in the comments section below. Give this a thumbs up, and I look forward to seeing you back on another video. Bye.